dear Claudia, I'm not a writer nor a painter. I'm just an ordinary old man. Unfortunately, my wife passed away at age of 84. I was 87. I don't smoke or drink. How could I overcome my grief? To tell you the truth, I didn't choose to create this world. In fact, I felt compared to do so. The man writing the letter is Rao Ping Ru. In November 2018, he turned 97. The work Ping Ru mentioned in the letter is Our Story, a book of paintings he produced in 2008 when he was 87. In his letter, Ping Ru relates the book's backstory to a Spanish publisher concerning the two most important women in his life. Ping Ru never received professional training. He paints based on his childhood memories of studying Chinese art. From 2008, he created more than 300 paintings in four years. His paintings offer a glimpse into the turbulent life of a man from a well-to-do background set against the historical backdrop of 20th century China. When Ping Ru's family published the paintings online in 2012, they attracted widespread attention. What drove this old man to create his first book? And why is his story attracting such interest outside China? Time takes us back to 1946. The war of resistance against Japanese aggression in World War II had just ended. A young Gormintang officer, Rao Pingru, returned home. Pingru's father, Rao Xiaoqian, had a friend called Mao Sixiang. Mao had a daughter, and making a marriage was on Rao's mind. Well, Her name was Mao Meitang, a typical well-educated young lady of early 1940s China. Meitang was among a new generation of women who were independent and outgoing. To Ping Ru's surprise, Mei Tang's father, Mao Sixiang, seemed to like him and wanted to find out more about him. He invited Ping Ru to dinner. Mao asked, Do you smoke or drink? Ping Ru said, No. 
Good, good, Mao replied. In 1946, the two families' destinies became intertwined. Their home province, Jiangxi, became the scene of a great love story. Jiangxi was a relatively prosperous place with waterways leading in all directions. Historically, it had been one of the most developed regions in China. It was a place of culture where people were respectable and modest. The local food, spicy yet delicate, reflected the lifestyle. Naturally, food lent a lot of color to Ping Ru's book. For Ping Ru, it seemed appreciation became real when it touched the heart. They were modern young people who still retained a traditional reserve. When they confessed their love, they blushed. Tongue-tied, Ping Ru remembered a foreign love song. Oh, Rosemary, I love you. I'm always dreaming of you. No matter what I do, I can't forget you. Mei Tang sang gently in Chinese. Now heaven and earth have witnessed our love. My heart is betrothed to you. May we remember each other forever and may our love last forever. Ping Ru wished the peaceful life would never end. But... In June 1946, the rivalry between the Gormindang and the Communist Party erupted into all-out war. And Ping Ru was dragged into it. But the situation turns for the worse. There was no escape for Ping Ru. In his heart, something had subtly changed. Before Ping Ru met Mei Tang, he had not been afraid of anything, not even death. But after they got engaged, Ping Ru had to take the future seriously. But there was no quitting the army. In 1948, Ping Ru finally returned home, hoping to make a fresh start in life. But even on the eve of his wedding, something was troubling him. I was Ma, 
，我生我没给他用过一分钱呢、啊，我是一个很不孝的儿子，所以那一天我一看到要结婚了，还我想到妈妈的事，我就哭起来了，哭了两个小时。He remembered his mother as a traditional, refined, and virtuous woman. She taught him to be the man he became. Rao Pingru was born in 1922. His mother, Yang Yuanjia, was a cultured lady. She inspired a love of art in the young Ping Ru. His wealthy family could ensure that Ping Ru was well grounded in literature and art. I was Ping Ru was given a Confucian education. Chinese people believe that spiritual civilization is the core of the family and nation. The life skills and moral education he was taught would influence him for the rest of his life. According to Chinese tradition, women play a critical role in the life of the family and of the country. But in his ivory tower, the 15-year-old was unaware of events taking place in his country. Thirty-five million Chinese people were killed in the fighting. The damage and suffering was incalculable. If all the lost souls and resources could have worked for the cause of peace, how much would mankind have benefited? But the bloody warfare ultimately served to reunite China. The Chinese people came to understand that the Great Wall could not protect them from modern invasion, nor could the people themselves unless they were one. My family is a school teacher. I don't have any money to go to school. I can't go to school. I have to go to work. But when I was born, 土地跟日本鬼子抢占了，我们要亡国了，也就是亡国路了。我怎么还在读书呢？我是一个读书人，但是我投笔从戎，保卫我们自己的家乡吧，我们祖国吧。Nineteen forty marked a turning point in the life of eighteen-year-old Ping Ru. Ping Ru set his pen aside and took up a rifle. Before his departure at Mid-Autumn Festival, his mother wrote him a poem. A bright moon hangs amid fleeting clouds. The country must be protected with sincerity, ambition and determination. Our eldest son must not worry about us, just send a letter to say he's safe. Ping Ru left home with his family's expectations weighing on his shoulders. He didn't know it at the time, but this would be a final farewell. The Japanese army employed biological warfare in China. Toxic agents were dropped on the Jiangxi region. Millions of people were infected, including Ping Ru's mother. With medicines and doctors in short supply, she couldn't be saved. This was the last photograph Ping Ru and his brother Shou Ru had taken with their mother. Ping Ru's mother died in 1942 at the age of 48.
The loss of innocent lives deeply affected Bing Ru. I hope people can learn to love so the world will be a better place to live in. Mi 1948 They were the happiest days of his life. Ping Ru was the spring breeze seemed so sweet. But life brings not only light, but shadow too. They sometimes quarrelled, of course. <laughs> As the years passed, the couple learned to understand each other. Living in a rundown house, they reveled in sharing the simple life. And so, they looked forward to starting a family. Time moves on to the 1950s. The Chinese people were embracing a new beginning and moving forward under the leadership of the Communist Party. Ping Ru and Mei Tang were among millions of couples determined to welcome new members into their family. 
Their babies would keep them busy, but happy. At the time, Ping Ru was working as an accountant and arts editor at a Shanghai hospital. Life was rewarding and filled with joy. But the happiness only lasted until 1958 when Ping Ru was 36. Just as it seemed his family might enjoy the peaceful life they'd yearned for, suddenly fate dealt him another blow. The new government was seeking a unique path for advancement. China was developing economically and social reform followed. The public-private partnership was over and the anti-rightists came to the fore. The end of one movement marked the beginning of another. For Rao Pingru, the former Gormindang officer, there was no escaping his past. In 1958, Pingru was sent to rural Anhui province for re-education through labor, without the chance to even say goodbye to his family. Rao Shizang, Pingru's eight-year-old son, had to live through his family being broken up. <laughs> At the time, many people in Ping Ru's situation tried to make a clean break from their families so as to protect them. Ping Ru asked Mei Tang for a divorce. In response, however, he received a family photograph. On the back, it read, Ping Ru, don't worry about us. Focus on your re-education and you will be together again. We are still a happy family. In her heart, Mei Tang believed in her marriage vows that whether rich or poor, young or old, they should endure all their hardships together to the last. Far away in Anhui province, Ping Ru was learning what it was like to plumb the depths of misery. Before long, famine struck. From 1959 to 1961, the hard work and food shortages caused many early deaths at Anhui's re-education camps. But Ping Ru survived. He started to understand that true happiness can stand the test of suffering. To Ping Ru's surprise, he discovered that one of his sons had been painting images of their family life. In his letter to the Spanish publisher, Ping Ru writes that he's glad to have a son with a talent for drawing. The fact is, I'm growing old. Sometimes I find it hard to draw. Fortunately, my son is a gifted artist. He painted the scenes showing when our family was apart. Just 
。可是我父亲一旦进去以后，他突然就关心时事了，就一直在开始看报，从没有间断过。很怀念那个时光，虽然很困难、很穷，但是大家很快活。他说：“一个男孩子，永远不要惹是生非，但是呢，也不能怕死。真的有什么事来呢？兵来将挡，水来土掩。” The mother shouldered the responsibility of keeping the family going. Sometimes she had to sell off her possessions. Mei Tang's struggles were too much for most people to comprehend, but one girl listened to all her difficulties. Sometimes,晚上看到我妈会会流泪，不是我也不知道，我觉得我装睡的时间比较多，她有时会看着我会哭会说话，她就觉得好像有点过意不去吧，我们小时候比较苦啊，但是呢，毕竟小，眼睛
夫妻就像同蜜鸟，同甘共苦过，才能成为真正的父亲。一见钟情，要终身眷恋，一辈子就是他。我们中华民族的文化传统、的婚姻的观点呢、啊，就是奔头到老，是不是？ For Ping Ru, it wasn't only their love that had been tested, but also their capacity to tolerate suffering. Ping Ru later recalled, we had no idea of the drama about to unfold. We've experienced upturns and downturns. But this is not the true value of life. It's being faithful to what you truly love. Life is required. I just want to hold your hand. A little bit is enough to live. But man, this is not possible. The body is sensitive to the sense of taste. It's called pleasure. 真正幸福，困痛苦当中也享受到的。我说，我想倒退五十年前，再过那个身份，再重新再来一遍。这个那个时候很苦，很久，但是我的人还在，心上的人还在，可以跟他共同来承担这个苦。现在很弱，没有人，有什么意义呢？没有什么多大意义了，是不是啊？His love has departed, and now there's no one to scold him. Time takes us back to 1979. In their old age, their dream of a peaceful life together had finally come true. And they teased each other as if they were back in their youth. New concept English came into China. New concept English is new concept. He he is saying, "You buy a 梅塘 nursed him and made fish soup for him while he recovered. Every day around 3 p.m., Meitang hurried to the hospital. Ping Ru 
would move to the balcony to look out for her return. He started to sense their days were numbered. Ping Ru had hoped they'd have longer together in their twilight years. But now the one who ate the soup is alive, and the one who made it is gone. Late in life, Meitang suffered from kidney failure and amnesia. <laughs> But the couple still struggled on. Life was getting much harder. On March the 19th, 2008, Mei Tang passed away, but her lingering look would live on in Ping Ru's painting. Jiu Yuan Chang Xiang Yi 
In 2014, Ping Ru was 92. He returned to Jiangxi to look for the place where he and Mei Tang first met. Mei Tang used to stand here. Bing Ru embraced the tree as if he were back with her 70 years ago. What Titan created 70 years ago has disappeared now. But time continues, and so does his love. Life may be as transient as a drop in the ocean. But art outlasts mortality and creates something eternal. That is how this book came into being. As he paints, Ping Ru examines his life. He's beginning to accept the inevitability of death and so understand the full course of life. As he approaches the final curtain, he realizes how beautiful life is. In his letter to the Spanish publisher, Ping Ru goes on. I thought that the only way for me is to record something about our life. I had no alternative but to create this work. My mind would be at ease once when I had finished this book. It was my obligation. I would like to tell you something before I finish this letter. In my life, there are so many stories I want to share with you. The best form, I think, is painting.
，人生苦短，青春难载，莫负初衷，相敬相爱，凡事包容，凡事期待，凡事相信，凡事忍耐，白头到老。幸福愉快，天长地久，真情云在。我俩的故事是一种审美的回味，可以说不是传统意义上的自传。正好，我觉得也表现了饶平如这个老人，属于老人的那种智慧或者是哲理。平如美堂是一个真实的故事，我认为正是因为它的真实，才更加珍贵。我一直被《平如美堂》这本书的丰富性所打动，它讲述的故事中闪耀着人性的光芒。Also, there was a, a very、um, high empathy with the. Childhood of Mr. Rao, how he grew up, all the things he lived through, that shows us that despite the big differences between our cultures, we also have a lot in common. What I found interesting in it is really the little stories of daily life that are recorded, and also the evolution of the lives of people over time as the Chinese history unfolds under our eyes. 